Hi, hey, welcome. My name is Jed Hacker. I'm with the Columbus Garden Railway Society. And this month was supposed to be my month teaching a clinic for the club, but since we're all kind of locked indoors right now, I'm gonna take you down into my workshop and talk about playing with foam and the different ideas I've used in my own garden, uh, carving and making bridges, making castles, uh, whatever your creative mind can come up with uh, is all possible. But I was just gonna show you a few techniques that I've used and hopefully it gives you a good start to finding your own ideas and maybe you'd like to copy some of mine. But um, uh, let me, let's start with going out to the garden and I'll show you out there what we've, uh, what I've started with. And we're gonna take a look at my bridge here. We have styrofoam that I have etched with a hot pencil. You can see that all the bricks I've carved out one at a time. Now, this gap right here, that is a separate piece. And I had that filled in with silicone, but you can see that there's a gap that has formed. So the, I guess I didn't put the right kind of silicone in there. And that's kind of happened in all the gaps. But, so each piece is, you know, one piece of foam, and then there's another piece behind it. And then this piece is its own piece and they're all glued together. I'm going to show you inside how how that's all been put together. And then there's four pieces on each of these uh, blocks here where, you know, you, the, uh, they're just glued together. Um, and that just makes it easier when you're handling all these pieces. But as you can see, it's been glued together, or I'm sorry, glued on top of the plastic wood ladder system, the Bill Logan system. And it, the, the tests that I've done with the gluing has been remarkable. They, they work, that worked really well. So here is another piece I did next to my bridge. It's my castle and castle ruins, I will say. And I will, put a little shot in here of uh, what I was trying to go for, what, it, what I wanted it to look like. But there's a purpose here. It covers my outlet. So it's that's worked really well. And the, uh, you know, my outlets here powers different things I have running inside the mountain. Or not inside the mountain, inside the, the park here, let's say. Oktoberfest goes right here. So here's another angle of the bridge, the viaduct. Now, these foam pillars are not structural to holding up the bridge. Inside is the ladder work, but then if you look Really inside there is a piece of angle. <laughs> you really can't see it, but it's it's driven about four feet into the ground just to prevent frost heaving. But there has not been any heaving and I think the this is all flexible enough, just flexible enough to uh, withstand any weather. Or, you know, I've kicked it a few times with my size 14 feet but uh um it's withstood all of that pretty well like i said the only thing that's really not held up very well is the the silicone that i put to fill in the gaps a lot of that has stretched back a bit but uh over top of the foam is uh a latex paint an exterior latex paint it's actually the same paint that I used to paint my shed. So you might recognize the color there. So now that I've shown you everything outdoors, let's go back inside and I'll show you my tools and different things I've used uh, to make all these projects. Okay, so we're back inside. 
let's talk about styrofoam. The styrofoam I've been using outdoors is this pink styrofoam you can buy at Home Depot. I've seen it at Lowe's. And it comes in a variety of sizes of sheets. You can buy a four by eight sheet. And it's a, it's a type of insulation styrofoam. And it's, it, it holds up really well outdoors. Now, any styrofoam is gonna break down with UV sunshine exposure. So you do have to paint all of this, these surfaces that are exposed to the sun. So uh, this is just a scrap piece I have. I'm gonna do some demonstrations on, but more typical styrofoam that you find in packaging is this stuff that has really large grain styrofoam. I, I don't know what the, what you call this type, but it still works. You can still cut it and you know it cuts pretty quick with a with a knife and um it's um i don't think it's going to hold up though and it, and there's anyone who's used this type of styrofoam i think you would agree with me so um i have a hot pencil here it comes with a couple of different ends on it but this end is uh it's just a long hot pencil basically I suppose you could probably use a soldering iron with a fine tip on it to do the same thing, but you can use it to make really nice cut edges, you know, if you want to cut through. And since this styrofoam is a little more dense, it takes a little longer to cut through. But um, this was a $19, maybe $20 purchase off of Amazon. and. I'll just say you get what you pay for it's it's cheap it does work but I believe the hundred dollar two hundred dollar foam carving knives that you can get probably work really well I, I've seen demonstrations at the different train shows and yeah they look really nice but I'm a cheapskate and uh, this will get the job done if you don't want to spend a couple hundred dollars and I don't plan on doing a lot of foam carving in the in the future just because I, I don't know if it's any cheaper to go this way over using concrete for a, uh, a viaduct, but it's what I use. It's, uh, I, it was a fun experience, and I, I think there are other projects, and I'm going to show you something else later. But um, so, so what I've done to uh, create my brickwork is I found a good straight surface, or I'm sorry, like a ruler. I just have an old scrap piece of wood here. And you just kind of line it up, make it straight. And then I just carve a nice deep line into the brick or into the foam. And that will be your, your mortar line. And you just kind of repeat all the way through here. And I'll uh, speed up the video. Okay, now that we have a nice brick wall, let's call it, with a standard brick pattern, and, and you can do cobblestones, you can make whatever pattern you want, and it's just about a matter of doing the, the finish on the outside, and I'll show you that in a second, but I've carved my lines pretty deep, and that's gonna be just fine, and actually I think that gives it a lot more texture looking, because you can, well, I'll show you with the, the wire brush next, you'll uh, use a wire brush to scrub away the top surface because this just looks too clean, you know, it's too perfect, too flat. Maybe maybe that is the look you want. Maybe you want to have a, a, a building where the, the wall is brand new brick and it has a real clean surface to it. So, um, but 
for what I was doing, I was uh, scrubbing the, the top finish, uh, and I'll show you that here. I've got a drill with a wire brush on it, and you just take the top, and you just, it's a very messy process, but I just kind of get it away here, and, you know, it, it just makes a real big mess. So, and you want to get the top of really it cleaned up. <laughs> So you can you can see the the rough finish to the still the, the factory clean finish I'll call it over here. But if you if you go too deep and you lose your lines, now you know what you just turn your your little soldering knife on here or your foam carving knife and you just go through and you carve in some new lines. But it's you're not going to hurt anything uh, by going too deep. You just you can always fix it. So from here, once I got all of that, you know, the, to the patina, let's say that I want it to look like, I would do a good vacuum and clean out all of the, the grooves of all of the, you know, the dust, styrofoam dust. It's really big particles. It, it, it stays together pretty well and it, it, it vacuums up just fine. But from there, you'll want to get a, a really good paintbrush that has, that can hold a lot of paint. And you just really slather it in there in between the, you know, fill it all in because you, you need to be able to make sure you don't have leftover spaces that still show the pink because you, unless you want to have a pink wall, <laughs> you want to paint it and so this side of this finished wall, I didn't really do a good job getting into all the cracks. You can kind of see there's still a lot of pink in there. But on the side that I used to, you know, show to the show to the public, I really filled in all the paint and you can even see one spot here where this is where a squirrel chewed away at it. Um, so you might have to go back and, and touch it up every once in a while if you have a lot of wildlife or if you kick it or if it gets damaged. Um, it, it will show uh, the pink underneath, of course. So I, I was using this as a wall, as a retaining wall to hold the dirt behind it. And then the, you know, the, the grade of my, uh, of my uh, layout was a little bit higher and then it just was here but I, I probably buried it into the ground up to here so I had something to, to stay in the ground but it was just really mostly a test piece that I put into my garden last year to see how it would work. So the next thing to talk about is adhesives to hold together your foam project and I used right off the shelf was a Loctite brand Proline 300 foam board construction adhesive and this stuff worked really well. It sticks to the plastic wood, or it adheres to the plastic wood and the foam. So if you want to glue the plastic wood right to the foam, you can do that, it stays together. Big thing is you gotta be patient on the dry time. It seems to take 24 hours really to get a good firm uh, lock together. And you know, even after six hours, you it still slides apart and uh, I, have I tested it by accident a few times. So I want to show you another idea here for using foam in the garden. And uh, there's more than one of us trying this idea out, but using this pink foam as a base for making a scene. Now, as you know, the weather plays havoc on our scenes that we set up. So what if we were to put a scene on one of these foam bases and then you can bring it in and out you know a little easier than you could otherwise and so my idea is eventually I'm going to paint of course this you know brown but then I'm going to put a glue surface on top and then sprinkle dirt on top so it looks like it's really part of the garden 
and probably around this beveled edge, I will stick pieces of uh, mulch, bark, you know, the, the mini bark mulch. So, cause I use a lot of that in other spots in my garden. So you can, if you need to set it out for a display for a day, uh, you just push the, the mulch right up to it. It'll blend in seamlessly. And if you do a good job decorating your scene here, you can, you, know, you could probably use static grass and, or other indoor type uh, modeling ideas and or or you could glue moss patches that you might have picked up somewhere else and you know this glue them on to, on here but this way you can have a really highly detailed scene and be able to pick it up and take it indoors um the other the, i kind of got started on this because I, I bought this house at a show but uh, after i got it home started looking at it and it's really ultra thin plastic and i I don't think this would hold up out in the sunshine, especially on a hot day. I think this would warp very quickly and uh, have tragic consequences. So I'm. Uh, this is the idea I'm looking at uh, for finishing up this scene is to uh, paint it and attach, you know, organic or maybe uh, store bought grass that you can put on top here and have a scene that can be highly detailed but something you can bring in that the weather won't destroy. Well, thanks everyone for joining me on this little video clinic today. Um, I'm going to leave a link to the hot foam pencil in the description below. So if you're wanting to give this a try yourself, go ahead and buy one of those pencils. I, I looked it up. It was $27 on Amazon. Um, hopefully this gives you some ideas for your own projects that you'd like to try out this year. Um, if you liked this video, please click the like button below. That will let me know that, hey, I enjoyed this, Jed, let's make some more videos. And if you would like to subscribe to the channel, click on the subscribe to the channel button below as well. Um, if you have any ideas for future video clinics, let me know, get a hold of me. We'll uh, work on filming one. Maybe if you want to star in your own video, I'd be more than happy to be the cameraman. Um, this is my first talking video that I've posted on, on YouTube. So please go easy on the comments on me. Okay. I'll, I can only get better at this. Um, for more information about the Columbus Garden Railway Society, go to www.thecgrs.org website for, uh, what we're going to do for meetings and for news in the club. Um, with the coronavirus going on right now, we're all locked indoors. Hopefully uh, by this summer, we'll be allowed to uh, explore each other's gardens once again and share ideas. But for right now, get outside, get planting, get running your trains, get everything running. It's a great time. What else are you going to do, right? <laughs> Thanks everyone for joining me on today's video. Take care, we'll see you when we see you.